Moonlight Lotus. Hey guys, what up? It is Moonlight Lotus here. Back with another episode of Gaming Talks. And we have come a long way with this series. And the collabs are rolling in. I'm so happy that people want to join in on this series with me. And today I have Flubber Knuckles. Flubber, Flubber, Flubber Knuckles. Flubber Knuckles. Flubber, Flubber, Flubber Knuckles. Flubber Knuckles. Yeah, I like making jingles because I'm weird and it's fun to do. And we're talking about an age-old topic. Console versus PC. Now, when it comes to console versus PC, I've always seen it as... There's, well, like most things, there's three parts. There's the console only because console's better, bro. PCs lead to modding and cheating and PCs cost too much. I ain't got that kind of money. I just want to sit down and play. I don't want to use a keyboard or use a controller. Then you got the middle that's like, I like both. They're pretty cool. I, I use both for different things or different things I want to enjoy. Or maybe all my friends are on console, but maybe the games I want to play are on PC or vice versa. You know, those exclusives, man. You gotta get them. And then you have, on the other end, with PCs, like, PCs the master race. We have everything. No one can beat us. PC's better there. No one can beat PC. PC, PC, PC. Master race. And that's basically, that's how it is. But I will break that, in, I'll break that down in further detail in my part. But next is Flubber Knuckles. All right. Hope you guys enjoy. Be right back. Hey, Moonlight. Thanks for that transition. It was pretty awesome. Uh, so for those who don't know, my name is Flubber Knuckle. I am. I met Moonlight through our little small YouTube exposure channel, and he's asked me to come here today to talk about the comparison of console games versus PC games. And personally, I love both. Because PC gaming offers a plethora of games and smaller games and different kinds of games you can play. But there are just certain games that I kind of love playing on console. And, you know, like first-person shooters as well as fighter games are just ones that I love having the control in my hand. I love playing on either a PS4 or an Xbox One just because it's how I am. And you can judge me. I know there are always going to be those PC Master Race people out there. And, you know, to you I say... Good on you, but, uh, I don't believe there's a master race. But when it comes down to it, I thoroughly enjoy both of them. Now, my console gaming, like I said, I prefer first-person shooters, you know, Halo, Call of Duty, and I do love my fighting games. Admittedly, the one I've been currently into is uh, the Naruto series with the Ninja Storm. But, uh, judge me as you will about that, I'm a bit of a weeaboo. On PC, though, it offers such a plethora of different kinds of games through indie gaming websites and Steam and all the other places you can go to get these smaller games. You can go out and spend like $3 and get a couple decent games. Now, will you enjoy those games? Are they going to necessarily have the best graphics? No, but you're not doing it for that. You're only trying to discover new games, or at least that's why I do it. And I love being able to go out there and spend $2 and get a relatively decent game. Is it going to have the longest gameplay? No. Is it going to have the best graphics? Probably not. But sometimes it'll have someone with beautiful stories. Like a decent game that uh, I think I liked. And it's one of those you, you kind of give it to a toddler and they can just play with it is the Voodoo Garden. And it's basically, you can set it up and it ends up running by itself and you're just kind of keeping bats from stealing your stuff from it. But I liked the idea of that game just because it is something to burn time away. Which many people, if they're like me, who have to wait for something to process or wait for something, they just queue up a quick game real quick. I will say the one thing I don't like, I've mentioned it already with the PC gaming though, is that you'll have these games that'll come out for open beta and your computer will do beautifully with it. And then when it final releases, it won't be able to handle it. And I was like, what changed? What did you guys add? What what did you do? What did you do to my game that I can no longer enjoy? But when it comes down to it, I don't understand why people have this console versus PC war. I mean, I'll joke along with it because I like joking and I'll play around with people who have the jokes on it. But me personally, I enjoy them both and I see no reason why not to enjoy them both. I mean, aside the fact that, you know, both are really, really expensive. 
But for those of us who are lucky to have roommates who have one, like I don't actually have anything besides my PC, but my roommate has a PS4 and my other one has an Xbox One, we all kind of just game up together. Admittedly, the one game I have to play on PC is open world games. I just, I, it's weird to say it, but I need to play those now on PC because of how much more beautiful the graphics can get. Um, that and party games, like for those who have played it, Move or Die, Speedrunner, they just, I feel they flow so much better, those kinds of games, on PC. Now, am I saying that they have to play PC? No. But I am saying that there's no reason to have this fight and war between the two consoles, or sorry, between the two, well, the two consoles as well, because everyone's always PS4 or Xbox One. I'm just like, mm, why not both? I have that little picture of Dora right there. But uh, when it comes down to it, my favorite thing, though, when it comes to having them both is the games that are cross-platform for both. And there are very few of those uh, that you actually have doing that. One of my favorites is um, Rocket League, which I unfortunately haven't played much of. I've played it through my friend's PS4, and it's pretty fun. I need to get a copy of it myself. And I'm not sure if it is because I haven't played it yet, but Overwatch is another game that I would hope becomes cross-platform because if it does, that's going to open up a whole new world for a lot of different people. And this whole idea that everyone's like, oh, you have to have this one for this game or this one for this one, I feel you need to have a universal platform, whether or not you're playing PC, Xbox One, PS4. I feel developers and game companies need to make it so everything can be cross-platform because you're going to get such a larger market that way. You're going to have people enjoying it more and have more marketing that way. Now, I get it. You know, there are always going to be the diehard fans. My brother has had a PlayStation 1, a PlayStation 2, a PlayStation 3, and a PlayStation 4. Never did Xbox. He didn't care for it. He's done PC gaming just because he had a PC back in the day. But he's kind of a PlayStation diehard. And I, I understand, you know, if you got your brand loyalty, but that's why I reiterate that it'd be nice to have everything being cross-platform. Anyways, that's the way I feel about it. There doesn't need to be a PC versus Xbox One versus PS4. And if you're playing games and enjoying them, enjoy them. But I always recommend, always check out the smaller games, because you never know when you find mine, might find a golden gem in there. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and turn this back over to Moonlight Lotus. Hell, oh, alright. That was Flubber Knuckles. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Remember, check his link out in the description below. I've seen his content. It's Dankaroni. It's Dank Dandy. It's the Dankiest. It's some of the Dankest I've ever seen. I love the word Dank. <laughs> alright, so make sure you check that out. And when you go over this channel and you see his video, be like Moonlight Lotus sent me. Alright? Because here at, uh, small YouTube YouTube exposure we like to show support to one another it's the thing to do alright so on to what I think of PC versus console starting with my console journey I started on Nintendo Nintendo 64 I then moved on to Sony with the PS1 and the PS2 and then I left it for the PC life on my laptop playing mobile games hardcore for like a couple years and then I moved over to the Xbox 360 and a little bit of Nintendo with the Nintendo Wii. And then I moved on to the Xbox One permanently for a little bit. And now I'm on PC. That is my journey through the gaming world. <laughs> but I've, I've loved console. And like anything that you love, you should be able to, you should, you should be able to say goods and bads about it. Because everything generally has goods and bads, even console and even PC. Do trust, do trust. So with console, it really just everything. It always depended on the console, like what of the company. Like I always felt like Microsoft was greedy. Sony, actually, I. If we're talking like, I know people are like, oh, he's about to pick. You're gonna pick a side now, no? Right. When it comes to the console, if I had to pick one, I would. Probably, like, if I went back to console, I would pick the PS4, PS4 Pro, because I haven't really experienced it well enough currently to say what I don't like about it. I've only heard good things. Well, I've heard it, it can overheat, not overheat, but it gets hot a lot, and sometimes it doesn't turn on right, you could fuck it up easily. But that's about it, and 
basically all that means is just a couple extra steps and you're all good to go. So the PS4 is pretty good in my book. But when it comes to like Microsoft, I always felt they were greedy. The Xbox One is way too online oriented. But I've been with them so long, it's like, I, these are my people. This is, this is everything right here, alright? This is my history. All my achievements are right here. And that's, actually, that's what really convinced me to um, even get the Xbox One, even after they changed the, the whole, how they were going to do it with uh, not being able to get used games and stuff like that. Xbox One had a lot of rigmarole with it. A lot of things that drove people away, and it drove me away ultimately. But the console's still good, though. I've had a lot of fun memories on console. I remember in school when people would... There were, I, I wasn't really around the PC gamers. Like, everyone said, oh, Xbox One. No, not Xbox One. Xbox 360. Join our Xbox 360 group. We play, like, Call of Duty. And we have this little group. Like, I know you can make, like, Xbox groups or some shit like that. I never got that deep in the Xbox. I also didn't have a lot of Wi-Fi. So, there's that. But consoles is pretty it's decent. Like, when it comes, as I said before in the intro of the video, there's three, there's three parts to this whole thing and I'm in the middle all right well I'm in the middle I'm in the middle more leaning towards PC but I'm still in the middle now for the PC part of this I'm in love with it it's great um if you're gonna get a PC you should get a PC if you're a hardcore gamer and you you know you're gonna be gaming like like 45 or something <laughs> like with a PC, you put money in, a whole lot of money in at first, and you, it opens up a whole new world for you. A whole new world, a place I know I kind of already knew. Because you can get games that are really old, you can get so many discounts and deals. Um, And I know, like, old games, what, you, what kind of mess is that? Old games... Listen, I've played some old games with some pretty horrible graphics, alright? But I played them because it was nostalgic for me, it was fun. You can experience the past without having, like, to get, break out the older console and connect it up to your TV. I, me, I can just, boom, click on the app, and bam, start playing right from my Steam or Origin and stuff like that. Also, it gives me more access to indie games and, uh... I'm not saying I pirate games, but, uh, ARG, maybe, ARG, <laughs> alright? But, yeah, you put in a whole lot of money at first, and then, bam, you're good. And, but even then, when you do have to upgrade a part, or just change things up on the inside, if you know how to do it yourself, then you're just paying for the part. If you don't know how to do it, you're paying for the part installation, but it will still be cheaper than paying for a whole new console. Like, for instance... Let's say they make another console after, well, for, let's just take the, the Xbox Scorpion, for instance, right? Xbox, Xbox One S, there we go, Xbox One S. Let's say on my, my computer needed a part, right? Like a graphics card. I could be like, of like a hundred something dollars for that. A hundred dollars, twenty dollars for installation. I would save money in the long run. Versus me getting a con getting a whole new console, and then having to wait for games for that console just in case it's not backwards compatible, and that's one of the that's one of the more money saving things about it. But if you're a casual gamer, like let's say like after long day work, you want to like drink a beer or something, like watch your favorite TV show and play a game or play a game while you're waiting for your lady to come home and you watch your TV your little shows together, get a console. Don't even bother with PC. Just get a console. Get a console. Have fun. Yeah, you're paying $60 every time you get a new game, but you can get a used game where you just wait for the price to drop, honestly. That's why I say a console is more for a casual gamer. I'm not saying a hardcore, a hardcore camera gamer can't have one, but it's more for a casual gamer, more for a relaxed, like, yeah, mama, play me a game. Oh, my friend's over. Let's play some Madden or something like that. But if you're really serious about it and you like you know you're gonna be doing this for years and you're trying to save money in the process, because you know, life comes in a way you wanna get like a car and a house. Like I'm trying to get a car right now. 
So you may want to get a PC. Like if you can save up for it, get a PC, or you just if you make it yourself, not make yourself, but um, not get a pre-built one, but get the parts and have it assembled, you would save money. So that's pretty much it for that. Oh, another point I wanted to mention: a lot of people say for like PC, like you can't um, you can't use control. I use control all the time. <laughs> like it's fun. I can, I, can, you know, I can also hook up to my TV if I want to. Right now, I have two monitors going, which is also great. So when, so when it comes to PC versus console, each one has pros and cons. But generally speaking, it's pretty much fun on both ends of the deal here. Like, if I did go back to the console, I'd say I would get a PS4 Pro. I mean, I'm not going to go back because I'm enjoying my PC right now. But if I ever did, you guys know where to find me. <laughs> this is Moonlight Lotus here. And get ready for that daily question. My dude, the daily question. Get hyped. Get ready. Let's do this. Alright, alright. So, it's time for the daily question. You see on the screen, which do you own and why? It's really simple. If you want to start a console war in the comments, do it. If you want to have a civilized discussion, do it. I'm here for it. Let's talk it out because this is Gaming Talks. You can also answer me on the Twitters. Hit me with a tweet. Tweet. All right. At Moonlight Lotus One. And I will respond back to you as soon as possible. Because as I said, I want to talk to you. Also, make sure you check out Flubber Knuckles channels. All right. My channels. Channel. As I said dank content I enjoyed it myself so you know I, I vetted them I put them through my process through my my test I broke up my check sheet funny check good audio check interesting check variety in games check it was a uh, it was great so as I said go and check that out this is Moonlight Lotus here over and out